My name is Laura Hoppel. I'm the Assistant Technical Director at Trike Theatre. And I am making a really cool paper theatre. This is a wonderful project that you can do uh, with your family. And I thought I would show you some of the basics. What you need is you need some paper, you need some cardstock, you need scissors or an X-Acto uh, knife, and you need a printer. And, and so what I've done is I've printed out one of the pieces of a set that will go into my paper theater from my printer. And then what you want to do is you want to adhere this slightly slim, flimsy piece of paper onto a piece of cardstock, which has a little bit more heft and weight. So what you do is you take some rubber cement and then you apply rubber cement to the back of your piece of paper that has your uh, set on it. And you apply rubber cement to the piece of paper that you want your set to stick to. So this is two pieces of paper with rubber cement. And then if my friend Wesley will help me with speeding up the camera, we can make all of this dry. And that's drying up very nicely. And then you stick the two together and you smooth it out. Now you have a really nice uh, piece of paper from, uh, that's reinforced that you can start to work with and you take your exacto blade and you cut this out you just go all the way around and I will I will do that so that you can see so there it is not too bad this is reinforced, and I thought I would show you kind of something that's a little bit closer to the finished product. This right here is the exact same set piece that this is right here, only as you can see, I've done a little bit of embellishment. I put a little, I put some glitter on, and I put some, um, some sticky jewels on, so that you can make it a little bit more three-dimensional and a little bit more fun, and then, the same process that I used to make this, to reinforce this onto this piece of paper, I also used to make the opposite side of this. So this is a uh, card stock on one side, and then this is the structure for this set piece on the back. So when you put the two together, and you use the same process to stick them together with the, with the rubber cement, you have a really strong uh, reinforced piece of scenery that you can then use in your theater. So I thought I would show you a full set piece from two pieces that have the front and the back. This one particular theater that I'm putting together, I've done it a few times over the years. And the thing I love the most about it from a tech, because I'm in technical theater, is the fact that it's not just the front. It's not just what you see, but it really does give you a sense that there's more to theater than just the surface of what you see, that there is a construction side behind it. So I'm gonna put these two pieces together using the same technique that I did. So, there is a really, really strong reinforced piece of scenery, piece of paper scenery, that's part of a larger set that you're going to get to see in a little bit.
been, what you've been looking at is called the town. And the town is, it's like a town square. And that's, that's the idea of it. And there's a door right upstage. And so you could have a whole bunch of different actors coming in. If you look at my hand, you can kind of see different places that they could be coming in, making their entrances and making their exits on the stage so that they can tell a story. And I, I just love that. So, uh, and then the other really cool thing that I like is the fact that if you turn this the paper theater around, you don't just see the really pretty glitzy front part of the theater, but you can also see the construction. So you can see right here, this is the back wall of the theater and there's some scenery pieces that might be sitting outside that simply aren't being used for this show. So they're just sitting outside waiting to be used. But you can kind of see that on the front part of, of a set, uh, there's all sorts of glitz and glamour quite often. But in the back part of the set, there's also a lot of construction that goes on to help hold the, hold the set together and to, to be supporting the storytelling, literally supporting the storytelling. So I'm gonna turn this back around and I'm going to show you some of the creative ways that we can tell a whole bunch of different stories, but on the same stage, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the fancy towers down because those are just decoration. And this right here is called the proscenium. A theater with a proscenium will have this nice big square or rectangle that everything that you look into is framed with, just like a picture frame. And then I'm gonna take the fancy facing off so that was also part of what the technical crew built then we're going to take some of the wings out and take we're actually going to take all the wings out so what you still have though now that the set has been taken away is you just have the proscenium and you have the floor and you're ready for your next set. So maybe we did a show that talked about being in a town and then the next show we decided to do would be in a forest. So we have our forest set and I'm gonna just slide this in here. So there's a whole bunch of trees and I kind of thought when I was when I was helping to put this together, I was, I was working on this, that maybe the set required a little bit more bling. So I made the fruit that was growing on the trees in the forest sparkly. So I, I did a little bit of arts and crafts there. And then the really cool thing that I love about the forest set is that it's got two backdrops. The, the drop that's on the very upstage side, the, the furthest part of the stage away from the audience, that's called, that's where you hang the backdrop, because it's the back of the theater. It has two backdrops. This would be like a giant painted mural that would fly in. And the thing I love is that there's this pathway that's going towards the forest. So when you look at that, you can see that maybe somebody I always think of Dorothy on the yellow brick road. Maybe somebody's walking along and we indicate through that painting that somebody's coming along that path. And then as they walk further and further and further downstage, maybe that flies out. And then this backdrop drops in, which is a whole forest so that you might get lost. You might get lost in the forest. It could be scary. So you could have a you'd have a really good time telling a story about maybe getting lost and then finding your way back home. That'd be a wonderful story to tell. So that would be our forest set. The next set that I'm going to share with you is my personal favorite. 
and it's called the cogwheel set. And the cogwheel set is a set that always makes me think of somebody who's really creative and has ideas churning in their brain. And they literally have cogwheels churning in their brain, coming up with creative ideas, maybe creative stories, maybe a creative way to solve a problem. And I just think it's wonderful. And I love the cogwheel set. So this is the backdrop. See all the, see all the wheels turning there? That's, a, that's the backdrop. Go. And then this is the mid-stage wing. And by the way, the places where actors wait to come on stage are places that are just off stage. You can't see them. It's called waiting in the wings. And the wings are created by usually what are called legs. Like these sections coming down here, they create a, it's like a curtain effect almost. So if you put one here and one here, and then you put another one here, here and here, and the space between this leg and this leg is called a wing. So waiting in the wings literally means waiting right off stage where the audience can't see you, and then you come on stage. Here's a wing, here's a wing, and here's a wing. So this is the cogwheel set, and I just love it because to me, it's the literal representation of having an idea. I just think that's so cool. Okay, so I'm gonna take that set out. Now for the next set that I'm gonna show you, it is going to be um, a set that requires a new floor. Now, and in theater, we would keep this floor, but we would paint it a different color. We would paint it to go with the story that we were telling. So this is a beautiful green gray floor, which would definitely work for the green cogwheel set and would probably work for a town setting very nicely and would definitely work for a forest. But for our next set, we're gonna want something a little more specialized. So I'm gonna take this floor out and replace it with, it's kind of a purpley dark brown floor that has a giant blanket or rug painted onto it. So let me just put this in here. And this is another factor of working with this wonderful little theater here because it's it's like dressing a paper doll and then we're putting different scenery in and different floors so we wouldn't really change the whole floor out but we would definitely repaint it because changing the whole floor out would be very expensive i have worked in some theaters that do do that and it's, it, certainly, it certainly does look good when they do that, but I've often thought it's, it's not always necessary to replace the entire floor when you can just put a different, a different design or a different paint job on it. So I'm put the center section in, and you can see that beautiful rug that, well, it's painted, it's, it's really not a rug, it's painted on the floor. But it looks like a rug, doesn't it? So what will we use? Let's see here, I can tuck this in. Sometimes we do that instead. Sometimes paper dolls need um, paper clips in order to hold a well-used, well-loved outfit onto the doll. And it's no different with our paper theater. Sometimes we need a clip. You can see that floor. I'll tip that up so you can see that. See that rug? So if you've got a big rug on the floor, what kind of set might you use with that rug? And my answer is a giant Arabian tent. Or at least that's what I think it is. Here, it's the outside, and then this is the entranceway of the tent.
go. And then we have a backdrop. This is our backdrop, and that's not a full backdrop. So I'm gonna kind of do something a little bit sneaky, a little bit, just a little bit. And I'm going to put, I'm gonna take the cogwheel set backdrop, which has the backing on it, and I'm just gonna put that like that so that you don't see anything uh, further upstage. So that is the tent set that we're using with the rug on the floor. I think is really beautiful. That's one of the more beautiful, uh, they're all beautiful sets, but that one, it just makes me wanna go camping. I love camping. That is our Arabian tent set, our very fancy Arabian tent set. I, I try to think of what kind of adventures would I go on if I had a tent like that. Okay, but it is time to show you another set. I have so many sets. This is the most fun. It's just like changing out outfits on your paper dolls at home. And the next set that I'm going to show you also requires a different floor. So I'm going to have to change out the floor again. Now let's see if you can guess what kind of set would require the kind of floor that I'm going to put into our paper doll set. So there is our Roman set with our Roman tile floor, our ceramic tile floor. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's marble, pink marble. I don't know. What do you think it is? Let me know. I think it's tile. So this would be a wonderful set to tell maybe uh, a story that's much older than our, than our modern day shows would have. So one of the things that's interesting about theater, and one of the things I've been saying is, uh, I've been using the phrases upstage and downstage. And to explain that just a little bit better, the upstage is the part of the stage that is furthest away from the audience. And the downstage is the part of the stage that is closest to the audience. Because stages used to be made on what was like a rake, so that uh, they lit the further upstage you went, the higher you went. You, you literally were climbing up a rake. So if you were here and, and you walked all the way up to here, you might be eight to 12 inches taller here than you would be down here because of the way that the stage was raked. So going upstage literally meant walking up and coming downstage literally meant coming further downstage, and that made it easier for audience members to see what was going on further away from them. Because if you elevate something, you can see it a little bit easier. So upstage and downstage, and if I'm standing right here and I am looking at the audience, if, this, if my pen is a person, my, my knife is a person, and my knife is looking at the audience. To the left of the knife is stage left, and to the right of the knife is stage right. So if a director says to an actor, move down stage left, they would come here. Now cross to upstage right, they go to over here. So downstage left to upstage right, upstage right to center stage, center stage to downstage, right, downstage right to upstage left. And that's Theater 101. <laughs> so I'm going to take this one apart and I'm going to show you the next set that we have. So I'd like to think of a dragon maybe flying through the sky, maybe somebody on a, on a rope or on, on wires flying through the sky. Maybe Peter Pan is flying through the sky. So this is uh, 
this is a cloud set. And just to reiterate, all of these sets are construct have construction coming in from the back. So you should always keep in mind when you see a show that there's a great deal of construction that goes on in order to make something that looks effortless and weightless actually be really structurally sound and safe. Uh, well, no theater I think would be complete without a drape or a magnificent curtain or reveal of some kind. So this is my reveal, which is a lot of fun. And I'm gonna leave that there. Let's see here. Oh, I have to change the floor out again. So oop, let's pull the curtain out. I'm going to reveal the curtain and show you the drawbridge Ooh. with two large spider webs that will be revealed after you pulled out the drawbridge. So you could have a really scary Halloween story on this set. You could you could do something a little bit uh, darker in theme because it's like a truly darker in color. And I really love this set because it's the set that I made the most mistakes on when I was making it. And I'm actually going to redo this set, but I'll show you my mistake. And I'm not afraid to make a mistake because I've definitely learned from it, but I put too much glitter. I thought it would be really pretty to have glitter for each of the spider webs, and I think it would be, but I made a mistake in how I applied it, so I have to redo this. But that's how we learn. We learn, I think, more from our mistakes uh, than we do from not making mistakes. So I'm going to do this again, and I'm not going to make these same mistakes again, and I think the second spider web set will come out beautifully. And I think that's wonderful. Okay. So we've got our basic set, and we've got our basic floor, and I'm going to end this by putting in a basic wing. This is an unpainted wing that is just there because this theater isn't currently being used. So this is just a plain black theater floor with a plain proscenium arch and it's waiting. It's waiting for somebody to come along and decide what story they want to tell on it and just be used. So we'll put the we'll put the curtain up up stage along with a little light. It's hanging up. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is a little lantern. So we have a little light, and then we're going to just put the curtain down. And we're going to wait until it's time to tell a story on our stage. Thank you so much for joining me and learning a little bit about paper theaters and uh, the creativity that can be inspired by them and the stories that we get to tell. So I'm going to put the theater to bed and say good night.